Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> back today with my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. Now, you remember I was working on those hidden hinges. Oh man, hidden hinges will never work, right? <laughs> and I really started to get tired of it. So I'm taking a break from that just entirely, going to work on something else. And that something else is my vent windows. Now, I like pop outs. As I said, I was going to be putting something on here. But one of the troubles I have being six foot three and 260 pounds, and this I noticed this in the fastback, and I imagine it'll probably be even harder on, on a Eleanor because not only is she a beetle with smaller interior space, but she's also got a much lower roof. But it's really hard for me to get back there to open up these pop ups. It's just practically impossible. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install electric motors on them. Now, I mentioned in the previous video that uh, Dodge Caravan uh, has a redeeming factor, and one of the redeeming factors is this wonderful little electric motor that uh, swings pop outs. I stopped over by the U uh, pull and I got them for $7.50 each. One of them doesn't work, and they have a 30 day warranty, so I'm going to bring it back tomorrow and grab one out of another car. I don't even want my money back, you know, just give me another one, and if they give me a hard time, I'll just buy another one. $7.50. I don't need to cry the blues over it. I've seen them for 60 bucks brand new online, and even that's not too bad. But uh, this is the part we're going to use. I don't remember what year caravan it's on, but I think it's from the late 90s and maybe limited to 2000. I think the ones after that have a very similar design, and I don't see why you couldn't use those. But going back, I remember all the way back to, I think it was 1984 or 85, whatever the first or second year was of the Dodge Caravan, and I think that's what it is. I might be completely off my rocker saying this, but I think that's when they began. And my mom wanted one really bad, and my stepfather went out and bought her one. And uh, it was the cheap one that had all of the, you know, the hand handles that you had to flip out by hand, kind of like the pop outs on the Beetle. We had that about two or three years, and then she decided that she wanted to upgrade. So she got a new one, and the new one had electric pop outs on the third set of windows. Now, of course, the Beetle only has two sets, but the third set on the Caravan had the electrics. Second set, you know, we still had to manually open up. I remembered these from back then, and I remembered the design of how these little things swing outwards. I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work. Now, I've seen people write them up before online, and I've seen some pictures of them, and, and I actually have even seen a video of the things popping open and closed. Uh, I know that people have used them out of Nissans, and I've seen people use them out of, um, oh, geez, what, uh, Lancias. I'm not going to find those over here in America. There's no wrecking yards that have one of those, I'm <laughs> unless some some uh, <laughs> military person brought one over here, but we're not finding a Lancia here in the States that have these pop outs. So Dodge Caravan was it. Uh, these things are all over wrecker yards all over the United States. I mean, all the way back to the original 80s, you'll still find those damn things. Those things are such pieces of crap. Any of the ones that are still on the road, they just make clouds of smoke, unless they're newer. I mean, every single one that's older that runs, they just make clouds of smoke. I guess the rings run wear out on them, or valve guides, or something. I don't know. They're just, <laughs> it's a Dodge Caravan. It's garbage. Anyways, as you saw in the beginning of the video, I started to install this sucker on the left-hand side. I don't have the pop-out windows yet, but I think I can still get it working without the pop-out windows and then improvise because this is going to be fully adjustable every which way, just like my door hinges. So if this doesn't work because the duck man doesn't know what he's doing, once again, I'm going to build adjustability into it so that way I can uh, compensate for whatever mistakes that I make because, you know, I'm the MFDM and I just don't know what I'm doing, right? Anyways, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. And don't forget to check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links and all the different links to my YouTube channels. If you haven't visited my other YouTube channels yet to subscribe, you need to because there's things that you're missing. You also need to subscribe to Earl, by the way, who will be doing my paint work in about a month. And he's going to show the big color reveal over on his channel when he does the paint. So you guys need to watch. You need to subscribe. DuckShit.net forward slash CCC will get you to Earl's channel. Subscribe to him. Follow his videos. And look at the most recent video where he and I walked around the car and he talked about it. Let's just say he likes it. So check the video out. You have to. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in just a minute.
All right, up in this hole here, you see what we got? I made a box that'll fit right into it, and it just happens to be green. You might recognize this color as the color that Eleanor originally came in, and that's because this was a piece of the roof that didn't get used. And I think it should fit in the hole. Yeah, it's pretty close. Oh, I thought I was gonna have to trim it. There it goes, it's in. I don't know how far I'm going to push it into the, uh, the C-pillar, but uh, that gives you a pretty pretty accurate look as to what we got going on here. And then the motor should sit in there nice and recessed, with just the arm sticking out of the diagonal, so that way this can go ahead and uh, push the window open. Inside the box here, there's enough room that I should be able to move the motor forward and back, up and down. Uh, hell, I could even twist it a little bit if I need to. It shouldn't need much. It really shouldn't need much at all. But looking at what I got here, there's, there's certainly a lot of play in it. And then what I'll do is down here in the bottom, I'll cut a hole. The wiring will pass right through there with a grommet. So that way everything is nice and hidden. And once this is in here, I'll make a nice cover that wraps over it. So that way I can go ahead and wrap the headliner over it. And it shouldn't look too unnatural or irregular. It should look like, you know, like it's stock. I wonder if there's going to be any problems with the uh, the rear seat coming up through here. I don't know how high it comes up, but geez, that's pretty close. You know, I don't know how high that comes into here. It does come up to here somewhere. Well, you know, that's one of those problems I'm just going to have to deal with when I get to it. This is the only way these can go in here. There's really no other place I can put them unless I put them on the front. But <laughs> who puts pop-outs on the front? I mean, that would be pretty damn silly scooping the air out from the front. I mean, I guess you could, they do that on buses. That would certainly make a weird, you know, turbulence effect in the, in the back here. But um, yeah, we got the box cut out. I think that'll work out. I have to do a little trimming on it, I'll get it welded. Uh, what I'll do is I'll weld some studs in there first. So that way I know approximately where I want to put this motor at. And then, um, then I'll get the box welded into place. A little bit of cleaning up here and there. I think I can make this work. Actually, it looks um, it looks really good. It looks really good. I like it. I really do like that. You probably noticed I put in a piece of plexi. That's one of the pieces of uh, glass <laughs> that fits into the car currently. It's just stuck in there with some duct tape, which is why it's sagging and leaving a huge gap. But I just wanted a nice flat plane, so that way I could figure out approximately where the... Um, the little divot is that attaches to the glass and this is actually going to be a glue on one it won't be one that you have to drill a hole for uh, however the hinges up front i'm going to see if i can find some stock pop out hinges in fact i'd like to use the entire pop out frame i'm going to have to reform it reshape it do what i have to do to uh, make it work uh, i don't know what i'm getting into with that but somebody told me it's made from aluminum and if you heat it with a torch it will bend and once you bend it about twice the aluminum gets real stiff and you can't bend it anymore so you have to heat it up again and again bend it but the uh, original pop-out um, frame that goes around this should work it should work I, I don't see why it wouldn't if I can bend it just that way and like I said the original hinge fit on there all right having a look at the part that we made here you notice I drilled two holes in it they actually correspond with the alignment of how I anticipate this motor to mount so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two of the original Dodge bolts, which yes are metric, and I'm going to be putting them in the back here, just like this. They have a nice flange on them, which makes them really easy to, to weld onto uh, sheet metal. You don't have to put too much heat into it. And then I'll take the, the top of the heads here and I'll just grind them down so that way I have clearance in case there's not enough room on the back side of this when it goes into the C-pillar. All right, let's go ahead and get those tacked on there. And then... Uh, We'll do a trial mounting and see just what this is going to look like. There you go. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, we've got our box with our motor mounted into it box needs a little bit of tweaking because it's kind of contorted a little bit. I kind of bent it and twisted it by accident, but it should still fit in the hole, I would think. Yeah, it still goes in. 
I definitely have to do some welding on it to uh, make it fit a little better though. You know what? We are bottoming out. Woo, that was loud. Bottoming out a little bit on there. One of those bolt heads. And it was okay that I beat on that because it's actually dented on the outside, pushed in. So, yeah, looking at it from the outside, that was actually that spot where Earl and I were talking about that has that dent in it. So I just knocked that dent out. Yeah, I could still knock some more of it out. <laughs> yeah, that fixed it. Anyway this back in here the way we intended all right this still needs a, some tweaking here because this motor is on a wacky kind of angle but make sure it hits that glass just like that all right what I'm gonna do is we're gonna test it and how we're gonna test it is I'm going to fasten the uh, button I don't know if that's what it is but that's what we're gonna call it the button here to the glass and we're gonna do it with just a piece of Gorilla Tape this is no oh, that doesn't want to stick to that that's interesting I thought Gorilla Tape stuck to anything <laughs> Guess I have to really get in there better. All right, let's try that. All right, now let's apply some power to that thing and see if it does everything that we dreamed of. Got us a motorcycle battery in here, which provides 12 volts. If I get it hooked up backwards, it'll turn the wrong way. No, that was it. Okay, hope you guys saw that. <laughs> Try it again. Oh, fantastic. Let's put the camera on the outside so you guys can see it. Okay, I don't know if you guys noticed it right off the bat, but no, I don't have a hinge on there right now. This is also just some Gorilla Tape. And yes, there's a huge gap at the top because I wasn't gonna try to uh, fight gravity when I stuck it on there. I still need to get a hinge for that. It turns out a hinge set is actually relatively inexpensive. And I think I only need one set for one window and because everything's been chopped down, it'll work for both sides. Anyways, let's go ahead and get in there and uh, you wanna watch right there. All right, here we go. I think I hooked it up wrong. <laughs> let's try again. There we go. And then reverse polarity and it closes. Yeah, the tape's already starting to fall apart. <laughs> but that demonstrates, demonstrates proof of concept for sure. Let's try it again. I like watching it. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, this pleases the MFDM. All right, I think that's enough. Let me come on out there and let's wrap up this video today. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, you guys. I really do appreciate it. I pretty much got proof of concept down. I know this is going to work. I just got to finalize welding that box into place and figure out exactly where I want the motor to stay so that way it can push the glass open and closed. Now, of course, that's just a piece of plexi, which is a lot more flexible than glass will be. So I got to figure out exactly how much give the little mechanism is going to have and uh, whether or not it's going to bind because it's not pushing exactly straight. It's pushing kind of on a goofy angle, but I did that on purpose because the B pillar here causes the glass to open up at a, an odd angle. It, it doesn't open up straight as it would on a typical uh, pop out on a beetle. So I did try to compensate a little bit for that in there, but it does have a ball joint on it. So I think that will make up the difference for it. It'll probably be fine. I don't know, I'm probably overthinking things, but I built adjustability into the box so that way I can move the motor around should I need to just 
I don't know, not even but a quarter of an inch in any direction and even twist it a little bit if I have to. It, it'll move on all axes. Tomorrow we're going to try to get that welded into place and cut out the other box too. This was actually really easy to do. There wasn't much to it. I don't have but a couple hours of work into it from start to finish and it's only because I had to find some of the tools to do the job. <laughs> so anyways, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time I upload a video. And don't forget to check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links. That's right, there's a lot of them. I'm active on a whole bunch of different services, so if you want to find me and you want to see what else I'm up to, check it out. Hit the website up and you'll find it there. Now don't forget, you want to check out Earl. You need to subscribe to his channel, duckshit.net forward slash ccc. Earl is the guy who's going to be painting Eleanor. He'll be doing all the work over on his channel. So if you don't start seeing updates for Eleanor starting next month on my channel, the reason why is because Eleanor is going to be sitting over in Cocoa, Florida. That's right, the other side of Florida where Earl's going to be doing all the paint and body work. And uh, he'll be posting his updates from there. So you need to subscribe to him if you want to see what's going to happen with Eleanor, especially if you want to see what color she is, because he's going to reveal that. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. See you next time.